Okay, so this is the University of Chicago Press Journal's um, website. On this website, we host um, 81 journals as of 2019. Um, this is the homepage. Uh, there are two main menus that you'll want to use to navigate the website. Um, there's the main menu here on the left that has some of the most commonly used links. Contact us, browse the journals. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, each page has its own navigation bar that's here in the middle of the page. And this bar is dynamic, so you'll see the options on this bar change based on what page you're on. Um, on the home page, you can see um, some basic links for subscribing and renewing, uh, some links for librarians such as rates, orders, and payments, some agent info, and some info for prospective publishing partners. Um, down here, you can see the main links for browsing our journals, and then also, um, you know, some info about the press and some recent press releases, some newly acquired journals over here on the right. Um, diving right into it, um, you know, we can browse journals by subject. So let's click on economics. Um, and here you can see the, I think, 11 titles that are in our economics collection. Um, so the journals are divided here by subject. So we'll go ahead and click on one of them. And here you can see what um, an individual journal's homepage looks like. Um, so this is the Journal of Political Economy, and the homepage always um, serves as the, you know, the, the current table of contents is always first and foremost on this page. Um, on the list of options, you can see that you can subscribe and renew. Um, you could browse through other issues of the journal. You could also use these arrows to go to a previous issue or the next issue if you're scrolling through and you want to find something. Um, and also any customized collections we may have put together of articles are on here. Um, you could also take a look at forthcoming articles. So if you want to see just accepted things that are not yet formally published, um, they're here. And looking even further ahead, you can see what's forthcoming. So um, abstracts of things that will be published in future issues. There's also information for contributors, such as um, submitting manuscripts, instructions for authors, data policies, authors' rights, um, all the usual stuff. And you can also get some extra information about the journal here. So if you're curious about the journal's impact factor, um, or you want to see who's on the editorial board, this would be in the About menu. Um, you can also get links to the journal's social media accounts if you want to connect with them there. Um, and then um, another thing you can do is you can sign up for electronic table of contents alerts. So if you want to get an email every time a new issue of the journal is published, um, you can click this button. And then you'll, um, a list will come up where this journal may be sele uh, will be selected here, and then if you if you hit submit, then you'll be subscribed to uh, alerts from that journal. You could also pick any other journals that you may be interested in from that list. Um, going in a step further, let's take a look at one of the articles on this page. Okay, so this is the article view, and the options on this view are very similar to the options on the journal view. Um, you can see that the arrows here have changed from previous issue, next issue, to previous article, next article. Um, this enables you to go through uh, the articles in a whole issue smoothly. Um, in these tabs, you can see the way to access um, different aspects of each article. So there's the abstract. That's viewable by everyone, whether you have a current subscription or not. Then you have the full text. Um, this is, you know, um, just enhanced HTML, so you could quickly um, click on all the citations and follow up with them. Um, and the other thing we have is, let me see if I can find a figure here. Okay, and then so uh, the figures are embedded within um, the text itself, and you can click, expand. Um, you can use these arrows to cycle through all the figures. And you could also download a large image or download the figures of PowerPoint slide if you want to use it in a presentation. Any supplementary material, such as data archives or appendices, is over here. 
And then, of course, if you prefer PDF or you want to print the article out, there's a typeset version. Um, and this is the same view that you would have if you actually had a print copy of the journal in your hand. When you're on the full text menu, um, there's a menu bar over here as well. And this enables you to quickly scroll through um, all the different sections of the article. So if you want to look at the introduction quickly, or you want to go straight to the conclusion, uh, using this menu is the fastest way to do that. Over here on the right, you can see another bar for signing up for eTalk alerts, and then some user tools. Um, you could export citations. Um, you could email this article to a friend. Um, there's info on permissions. You could also track a citation. So if you click this button, um, you will actually be put on a list where um, anytime anyone cites that particular article in, um, in Crossref, uh, you'll actually get an email alert. So if, if you're particularly interested in a field and there's an article that you know is going to be important, you can actually see which of your colleagues are citing it and get alerts about that. Um, you can add the article to your favorites on your University of Chicago Press account here. Um, that means you have a saved list that you could refer to anytime. And you could also take a look at information on reprints if you want to use it um, for you know, a course packet or something like that. Um, you also have the standard slew of sharing options here, so Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, email, and then a few other ones as well. Um, we saw some math as we were scrolling down in this article. One exciting new development is um, something called MathJax. So typically these equations would be rendered in HTML, uh, which means they would look okay, but you couldn't really do much with them. Um, with our MathJax integration, you can actually right-click and take a look at the math as code and import it into you know, um, math software that you can use to then manipulate the equations. Um, if you want to do some further work. And then one other thing that we have that's sort of a new development is altmetric badges. So these don't appear on all of our journals. Uh, we're, we're doing a test trial right now to see how useful they are to our readers. Uh, but some articles will have these, and um, you could click on it and see basically the, the altmetric information for this article. So what kind of engagement on the web in general um, has this article generated? So for instance, you can see in this case, there, there have been two blogs that have cited this article, um, 52 tweeters, and then 312 readers are um, reading it on Mandalay. So that's the article level view. Um, Let's take a look at the search features next. So we have a, a pretty intuitive search bar. Um, there's two or three options here usually. So you can search anywhere. You can search within a particular journal. And you just enter the phrase you're interested in. Let's actually expand this out to anywhere and then click Search. Um, and this is the, the search filtering menu. Um, so this menu allows you to then take your search results and filter them down further to get exactly what you're interested in. Um, the first thing to note is that articles are clearly delineated as free. Um, if you're interested in only looking at things that are free to everyone, not only people who have subscriptions. Um, here on the left, you can see the filters. So you could filter by author, you could filter by journal, and you could filter by publication date. Um, so we search for democracy here. Let's say that you're only interested in things published in the Journal of Politics, so I'm applying that filter by clicking on it, and you're only interested in things published in that journal in the early 80s. So I'm going to go ahead and move these time arrows from 1980 to 1983, let's say. Okay, so that gives you 304 articles within this journal alone that were published in the early 80s that were related to democracy. And so you can see how, you know, um, and let's say that you're not interested in book reviews, you only want the main research articles. You can filter that down further to 132 relevant articles over here. You can sort them by relevance, or you could sort them by publication date. And if you, if you want to select multiple articles, you can add them to a list, 
or download the citations. Um, when it comes to citation management, uh, we cover most of the most popular um, citation software. So we have uh, RIS, EndNote, BibText, Medlars, and RefWorks. And so we found that that works well for most users. Um, switching gears a little bit here to um, the tools that are available to librarians. So we'll go back out to the, the home page. Um, a librarian can register for an admin account that enables them to log in and perform certain key functions that normal users don't have access to. So I've been set up as a librarian here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on my name. Um, so pretend that I've already, you know, um, I logged in. And so here you can see the options that would be available to me as a librarian. Um, so I could take a look at my institutional access entitlement. So these are the journals that I currently subscribe to and the content coverage periods they're related to. Um, I could pull usage reports. So all you need to do is select the year that you're interested in. Um, you select the report that you're interested in as well. So let's say that you're interested in a counter one report, a full text article request by month and journal. And then you pick your preferred format. So let's say you're interested in XML and HTML. Um, you put your email in here. Uh, or you could automatically email it to all the administrators that are registered at your organization. And then you submit your request. An email should go out to you with that report in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, moving on, um, you have this IP range menu. This allows you to um, set up your IP ranges on an ongoing basis. So if you're adding an IP range, if you're subtracting one, you don't have to put in a ticket with us. You could just go in here and change your IPs as needed. Uh, we'll vet them, but librarians can save a little bit of time by doing it themselves, we think. Uh, we also have shibboleth options. Um, this is basically you know, user authentication. Not all librarians use it, but the option is here. Uh, you could also alter your link resolvers. You could manage the administrators. So once you have one administrator set up at our organization, you could add your colleagues if they also want access and they want to see the usage uh, or manage the account. You're free then to add an administrator. You have some control of the branding um, involved. So you can see here that there's some text that says access provided by the University of Chicago Press. Um, you have control over this and you can change it. So if you want to say, you know, access provided by the University of Costa Rica or you want to say access provided by the Department of Anthropology at the University of Costa Rica, um, you could let your users know who exactly is, you know, purchasing that content. And finally, uh, for those that use KBARD files to manage their holdings, uh, you, here you can download the most recent up-to-date KBARD files for uploading into your catalog system to make sure that you have access to the fullest range of content that you're entitled to. And that is the University of Chicago Press Journal's website in a nutshell. If you ever have any issues with access with payments for a particular subscription, um, there's two places you can go. So the first place you can go is the librarian FAQ down here. This should give you answers to the most commonly asked questions by librarians. Um, in addition to that, you could go here to the rates, orders, and payments page. This information um, will give you, you know, um, our rates, payment options, but also who to contact if you're having any issues, whether it's with your access or with payments. 